Welcome to the Amsterdam Arena. World Bowl line, Barcelona and Berlin. Berlin won the toss. Barcelona is going to kick off. Mike Carlson here with Dale Hellestray. And Dale, atmosphere is unbelievable. It's electric here, Mike. It's, uh, you can definitely tell it is the climax of the World Bowl season. And we've got everything we could have hoped for. Two best teams, and there's Pete Voss, the Berlin coach. We were in the locker room with him just a few minutes ago, and here's what he Pete said. Oh, man. So oh, man. Anything good at all? Oh. Hey, baby, just relax. Just relax and enjoy the hell out of it. It's been a long, long, long time since Tampa, Florida. But not a better place to end it now. Not a better thing to do than put a smile on your face. Let's go enjoy it. Best afternoon in the world. Here we go. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. And there's Peter Voss on the sideline. Boy, was he pumped up before the game. Day. He was. He was out there actually throwing pat and go with the quarterbacks. He looked like he had almost as good arm as Quinn. <laughs> he knows there's a lot of scouts here in the crowd. You saw it next to him. Bobby Bicknell, Jack Bicknell's son, remember the family rivalry. And here's the man to kick off for Barcelona, Eric Olsen, one of five Indianapolis Colts on the Barcelona roster. Ahmad Merritt is back deep with Corey Bridges beside him. Merritt, the top receiver for Berlin. They're pulling out all the stops for this World Bowl 9. Away. It's a low kick. Merritt to take it at the seven. He's got a wall in front of him. And he's brought down at the 26. Sean Morey coming over the top. And let's take a look at Berlin's offensive lineup led by the quarterback, number 12, Jonathan Quinn. Quinn, the league's MVP this season. Sorry, not the league's MVP, the league's all star quarterback this season. 24 touchdown passes, just one short of the record. So first and 10, 26 yard line. Sarah! Sarah! Two wide receivers left. Madre Hill, the lone what? running back. And Hill gets the handoff straight up the middle. He's going to get about three up the middle of Barcelona. And he's met by Sean Morey. Let's check the Barcelona defense now. Keith Washington, Donald Broomfield, Tim Engelhart on the all league team and Ramel Connor. Antonio Wilson, Corey Atkins, and Troy Pelshek, the linebackers. And in the secondary, Marlboro on the all-league team. Dante Brown, Jeff Popovich, and Craig Miller. The safeties, Sean Morris in there in nickel. And that's Tim Engelhart now. Second and seven for Berlin. Quinn, quick hitch on the outside. It's Merritt with the ball. And he's got a first down brought down by Antonio Wilson, the linebacker, and Dante Brown. And Jonathan Quinn, that first easy pass. And Coach Boss told us earlier in the, the week that he said he wanted to get his quarterback off to a good start. He'll call plays to get Jonathan Quinn into a nice rhythm. And they got it on that one. Ahmed Merritt picking up the first down at the 39. First and 10 for Berlin. 50, 50. Barcelona in nickel, two linebackers. Quinn, another hitch. Quick one to the side. Mori comes in. But we get a pickup of about three yards, stopped by Dante Brown. Demetrius Brown making the catch. It's so important for a quarterback to get off to a good start. You can see by the short, crisp passing game that once you get into a rhythm, the confidence builds, the offense gets in on a nice little roll. And I think you're going to see Berlin take the ball down the field with some success here. Second down and seven at the 42. Barcelona still in nickel. Four wide receivers for Berlin. Quinn, another quick hitch. This one goes to Dwayne Jones. And Jones is pushed out of bounds on the sidelines by Anthony Marlboro. Craig Miller, the safety, coming over to help. And obviously, they're just trying to draw Barcelona out. Until Barcelona brings their cornerbacks up. And I think right now, Marlboro playing in his first game in a couple weeks, playing a little tentatively. But until they bring the cornerbacks up a little bit, they're going to continue to throw the ball out there, pick up five, six yards every time they throw the ball. Another first down for Berlin at just about the 49-yard line. Two tight ends. Madre Hill, the lone setback. And Quinn sneaking on third down. Check that. It was third and short. Quinn sneaking, trying for the first down. And it looks from here as if he's got it. Antonio Wilson in on another stop. 
It's going to be an awful close call here, Mike. I don't, he didn't he didn't gain much yards. The uh, Barcelona defensive line got under the Berlin offensive line. Didn't allow much I think you're absolutely forward right. progress. That, that ball, if anything, went backwards. In the end, Antonio Wilson filling the gap to meet it. And Jack McNell relaxed as ever on the sideline. Once the game gets started, though, he's all business. Well, I think he is. And, you know, you see him, a little bit of that as a facade. You see him, you talk to him before the game, his nerves are definitely going a little bit, and he's excited about this ball game, especially. Yes, here's the chains are out. Here's the measurement. And it's in matter of inches, less than an inch, basically. <laughs> Dale Hellstra, you're the coach. What do you do now? Well, I'll tell you what, it's early in the game. It doesn't look like Peter Boss is going to send the uh, punt team out there. Now, there's two things he can do. He can try and draw Barcelona offsides, take a delay penalty, and then go ahead and punt the ball. Or he can go ahead and run a play. Getting to know him a little bit this week, it sounds like he's not afraid to take a chance now. And this would be a big chance. Midfield, first drive of the game. You get it, momentum's on your side. You don't get it, Barcelona's got a lot of momentum on their side. You want to have fun, you're going to go for it. And he's got a quarterback who's six foot five inches tall. Pifas looking on. Barcelona's got everything up there in a power formation. They're trying to draw Barcelona offside. Quinn sneaks. It looks like he made it this time. It's interesting when you see you see different quarterbacks and how they run that quarterback. It sounds so simple. Take the snap, lean forward, but there is a technique to it. You have to let the offensive line explode, and then you go ahead and take your step and get that yard. You heard the call, slots, swing right. You see the slots formation, double slots. Swing pass to the right. They've 50, had a lot 50. of success with this during this season. First and 10 at midfield for, Bar for Berlin. Wide open was Dwan Jones. 12-yard kickoff for Dwan Jones. And he's had a good season this year against Barcelona. Well, he definitely has. And again, until those cornerbacks come up and play a little tighter coverage, I tell you what, Quinn is going to be very happy to take those games every single play. Another first down for Berlin at the 38. Two wide receivers left. Pitch to Madre Hill. He cuts back inside. He's going to pick up about four. Tackled by Jeff Popovich, the safety. You look at Madre Hill. He was a guy who was cut a few weeks ago by his NFL team, the Cleveland Browns. He's had six or seven teams that have shown serious interest in him. I was talking to him on Friday, and he said, you know what, it's going to work out good. He's put on a, a show here the second half of the season, and he's going to have his pick of teams come this fall. Second and a long right, six right. from the 39. Four That's wide it. receivers for Berlin. Quinn, quick one over the middle to Ahmad Merritt. Makes the catch and hangs on as he's hit by Jeff Popovich. The thing about this three-step passing game that Berlin's doing right now is it takes the entire pass rush away from Barcelona. Tim Engelhardt, Ramil, Connor, and the entire defensive line, they count on the five and seven step drop to get back there and get pressure on the quarterback. When you take a three-step drop, it doesn't matter what your defensive line does, they're not going to get enough penetration to cause any harm to your quarterback. Second down and about two at the 29. Three wide receivers for Berlin. Quinn back to throw again. He's got the tight end short. That's Nuno. He's forced out of bounds by Popovich, who's been a busy boy the last few plays. He just continues to spread the ball around. He goes from his wide receivers to his tight ends, mixes in a run every now and again. And they look like they're out there in practice. They look like this is the way they drew it up in their game plan. He's on rhythm, obviously. He's six for six. He's dropping back, throwing on time, and he looks like an all-league quarterback. First and 10 at the 31 for the all-league quarterback, Jonathan Quinn. And Quinn is going to throw again. They fake the draw to Rodnick Phillips. The rush, Barcelona rushes on, and Quinn escapes. There's a flag down. Sean Morey brings Quinn down after a gain of about six. But that one looks like that one's going to come back. You're going to see holding called. And that really was... That really was the first deep drop for Quinn. Tim Engelhardt, the man who got there. The signal from Terry McCauley, the referee was holding. Holding. Offense, number 60. 10 yards, 
first down. And Terry confirms that to us. And that really the first deep drop of the game for Quinn, and they got in trouble. It was, and they were concerned. They've been concerned all week long. You got your tackle there, Jay Haygood, who's had a, a, a wonderful season. He came in thinking that he might play a little bit of guard, a little bit of tackle. He's done a wonderful job at left tackle, which is the most difficult offensive line position. But, like you said, that was Quinn's first deep drop. They've been concerned with Barcelona's defensive line. What they do is they run games. Their tackles and their ends switch. They run picks. They do everything imaginable to cause problems for your offensive line. And that's when you get pressure on the quarterback. When you take those seven step drops, you hold the ball a split second longer, you give the defensive line a chance to get back. Engelhardt's the guy with the speed who picks up the sacks, but Broomfield does a lot of what amounts to blocking in there for him. He does. And, you know, Broomfield doesn't get as much credit as Engelhardt, but you talk to Engelhardt, and he gives a lot of credit to the rest of his defensive line. Engelhardt had six and a half sacks this year, but like a good running back or quarterback, he gives credit to his teammates because without their help, he wouldn't have um, mustered up that many sacks. New chain has to come in, a substitution. They broke the first down marker. That's why the delay there. We saw Pete Vaz on the sideline. That's the first play that hasn't worked for Berlin, apart from a failed quarterback sneak. And I'll tell you, that stick, that stick doesn't look good. It looks like they already tried to tape, but it looked like it had a, uh, you know, a, a little a broken kneecap there or something. <laughs> they taped it up, and uh, it's just not holding up to uh, the rigors of the World Bowl. Tell the stick to take an aspirin, it'll be fine. So it's first and 20 now for Berlin. Quinn to Rodnick Phillips going up the middle. He spins, picks up extra yardage. And six yards before, Craig Miller picks him up and alternating running backs from Pete Vaz. Yes, and, and they've done this all year long. We talked to both coaches, and they both said they're going to stay with their regular substitution pattern of letting everybody play, even though it is the World Bowl. They're going to let Madre Hill and Rodnick Phillips rotate just like they have all season long. Second and about 14 from the 31. Three wide receivers for Berlin. Phillips the lone setback. They fake the draw again. Quinn's looking. He's stripped to the ball by Engelhardt. It's recovered by Barcelona. And it's the Dragons' ball. As Tim Engelhardt got the strip. Keith Washington is the man who recovered it. And that's a huge turnover for the Barcelona Dragon. They're getting their offense together, and we'll be back in just a few moments. And that's what it's all about, the World Bowl trophy here in Amsterdam. No score, a huge turnover. The Barcelona Dragons getting the ball. The defensive line made it happen. We just talked about Tim Engelhardt and giving credit to the rest of his defensive line. And, and, and this is the season that he's had. He wanted to work on his pass rush when he came over here. And you're going to see him here. He's working against Steve Estes, who got the start today, actually, by the flip of a coin. And Engelhardt just does a power rush, what he's done all year long, got an outside edge. What he did great here is he strips the ball. Instead of just going for the sack, he sees the ball. Great hand-eye coordination, knocks the ball loose. Keith Washington comes up with the blue ball. And Jonathan Quinn has had a tough time with Barcelona in both games when they played, even though they gained yardage and scored points. Exactly. They've moved the ball, but turnovers and sacks have hurt them in both games against Barcelona. So it's first and ten for the Dragons at the 34. Jarius Jackson is the quarterback. Mike Green is the tailback. Jackson of Audibles. And a pitch to Green. He's got some blocking. He breaks a tackle. And he goes out of bounds after a pickup of about three. Now let's check the offensive lineup for the Dragons. Quarterback, as we said, Jarius Jackson, second leading passer, eighth leading rusher in NFL Europe. There's the line, three Denver Broncos, all made the all-league team. And the wide receivers, Simmons, Inslee, and Gilmore, Brandon Christensen, the tight end, and the league MVP, Mike Green, is the tailback. There was a flag on the play. So it's a repeat of first down. The Dragons pick up an extra five. Ball's at the 41. Second down, first down, and about three. Three wide receivers for the Dragons again. Jackson changing the play. And again, it's Green. He stops and goes outside. He doesn't get much. Picks up maybe a yard. And let's check now the Berlin Thunder defense. 
up front. Warren, Washington, Big John Harris, and Antoine Young. Young has come on strong the last weeks of the season. The linebackers, Dak Strohmeyer, Joe O'Neill, and Mark Megna, who played last year for the Dragons. Peyton Williams, one of the best in the league. Wade Davis, the corners. Billy Gustin and Dwayne Stoops, the safeties. There's Antoine Young right now. Who, like you said, has come on late in the season. They're going to need a pass rush out of him to put a little bit of pressure on Jerry right Jackson. Barcelona. Brandon Christians. Their first charge down out. On the sidelines as Barcelona take a timeout. That's the first one for them. Jarius Jackson goes to the sideline, and obviously Berlin has seen what Frankfurt did last week. They confused Barcelona with lineups, and they're trying to do the same thing. Jack McNeil not confused, and we'll be back in just a second. Good thing the roof's open because the Goodyear blimp is up above and looking down. And the last time this game was in Amsterdam, back in 95, it was pouring rain. But it's a beautiful day today, Dale. Well, you know it's a big game whenever the blimp shows up. And look at those clear skies. We've been in Amsterdam since Thursday. I've seen nothing but sunny skies, gorgeous weather. My family's been able to go around and see the sights. And, and they tell me that that's quite unusual here to have four or five straight sunny days. And it's the magic of NFL Europe working yet again. Trevor. Insley, you see the leading receiver for the Dragons, second in the league. The leading punt returner, Brandon Christensen, is out. He's replaced by Vincennes Rodriguez, who plays on national downs anyway. They don't lose much in that equation, according to Jack Bicknell. Second and three at the 41. Insley in motion. Jackson now drops the throw, and Insley's got the pass in. First down yards, he's dropped the ball. Berlin's on it. Dwayne Stooks is the guy who picked it up. And it's Berlin ball, so they switch turnovers one way and then the other. Both teams said, hey, we cannot turn the ball over. Both teams have done it. Both teams have done it early. Right now, it looks like Berlin got the best of the trading of the turnovers because they have the ball on their own 42-yard line. And let's take a look now at Trevor Inslee. He's wide open. Makes the catch. Good closing by Peyton Williams. And Dwayne Stukes comes up and puts a nice lick on him. And you're going to see that Trevor Inslee's held down on the ground there as he tries to recover the phone. But let me tell you something. Donnie Young did a great job coming over and making the tackle. Turnovers are even. First and 10 at the 42 for Berlin. And Quinn's going to throw on first down. He's going deep. Jones can't get to it, but that's the play they ran last week. And I tell you what, they did that in Pat and Go, and, and he completed about nine in a row. He throws such a nice, deep ball. And again, talking to Peter Voss, he said, hey, they've done studies. And you turn the ball over three times in NFL games, you're going you're gonna to lose 91% of the time. Obviously, the percentage goes up as the turnovers go up. Berlin was plus seven for the season. Barcelona minus seven for the season in turnovers. Second and 10 from the 42. Demetrius Brown in motion. Quinn quick to Brown. Incomplete, led him a little bit too far. Maury on the coverage. And what do we say, what are they trying to do with this short pass offense, Dale? Well, obviously what they're doing is they're working a little bit on Sean Maury, who's a converted wide receiver, now playing defensive back, a little bit of cornerback. He got a couple starts earlier when Marlboro was injured. And they're trying to work, again, they're trying to get the defensive back sucked up a little bit and then beat them deep for a big for a big game. Third and 10 at the 42, Barcelona, five defensive backs, three wides for Berlin. Heckenback in motion. Quinn's looking over the middle, and he's got Heckenback, and Heckenback's brought down short of the first down. Coming up again, Sean Maury. Again, he goes to his five-step drop. Some pressure by the Barcelona defensive line helps him get rid of the ball a little bit sooner than he wanted to. Consequently, they were short on third down. Now you'll see the end zone replay. Watch for Neil Connor, the defensive end. He gets good rush there, beating Sammy Williams inside. And that's where and that's where the, the problems come into play for the Berlin offensive line whenever Barcelona runs line games. So a long field goal attempt. 53 yards, that's a four-pointer by Scott Bentley, the kicker from the Washington Redskins. And that's got to be a huge lift for the Berlin Thunder, and they take a 4-0 lead. We'll be back. And 
these are the players who these players on the field today will be looking to emulate. And you'd see some of these names, and obviously Kurt Warner, Leroy Glover, these are Pro Bowl players who have come from NFL Europe. Brad Johnson, he's a multi-million dollar quarterback now. Brad Johnson going to Tampa Bay. Kurt Warner, where are you when we need you in Amsterdam? So it's 4 nothing now to Berlin and Scott Bentley, who just nailed that four-point field goal, is about to kick off to the Barcelona Dragons. Deep for the Dragons, Rashawn Spikes, who came over from Frankfurt late in the season, and Sean Moore. Bentley's kick is up. And it's going to be Rashawn Spikes at the five. Maury's in front of him. Spikes has some space, and he's got a gap. He's up over the 40. He's crossing midfield, breaks a couple of tackles, and he's brought down by Scott Bentley and by Peyton Williams. And Bentley, that's his sixth tackle of the season. But whenever your kicker's making six tackles, you know that your kickoff team is not doing its job. But he just got through kicking a 53-yard field goal. Scott Bentley has always been known to have a strong leg. What I love about this league is now you've got a bunch of little things going on here. You've got a four-point spread, which means that now do you go for two points here? What are you going to do when you score points on down the line? We'll see if the Dragons can score now. First and 10 on the 46. Quick drop for Jackson and short pass out of bounds and incomplete. And let's take a look at those rule differences between NFL Europe and the NFL. Game clock starts on an, after an incomplete pass like we just saw. There's a 35 second play clock which puts a lot of pressure on and the four point field goal which Dale Hellestray likes so much. Second down and 10 now for Jarius Jackson and the Dragons three wide receivers Marco Martos. The Mexican is on the left. Rodriguez the Spaniard is the tight end. It's the option play and there's the pitch to, to Mike Green. There's a flag down, but Green picked up about three on the option. And they said, talking to Sam Ritigliano, earlier in the week, he said, look for us to run the option quite a few times today. You're going to see an illegal crack back block here on this play. And you saw the preliminary signal from Terry McCauley. Jackson can run that option all day long, though. He can. He's almost like another running back back there. He's every bit as big and strong as Mike Green is, and when he tucks the ball, he can go. Personal foul, illegal crackback. Offense, number 87, 15 yards, second down. And they call the crackback on Trevor Inslee. Trevor Inslee comes in from the slot, and what you have to do when you're the slot receiver is you have to be awful careful. You do not go down low on somebody's legs like that, you can end a career. Boom, just like that. Sean Payton could be done on a play like that. That's why it's such a severe 15-yard penalty. You do not want to see that in this game. Second down and 25 for the Dragons at their own 39. A huge penalty. There's Peyton Williams. He's up and running. Jackson again switching the play at the line of scrimmage. Looked like Berlin jumped. I'm out. But they got, they got, now that's a smart play. They got a timeout called before the jump. Yes, they did. They got a timeout called. And the reason was Peyton Williams wasn't sure if they had enough men on the field, and he didn't think they had the right coverage called. So it's better to be safe than to let a big play happen because you weren't sure what coverage you're in. Dave Duggan, the defensive coordinator, he's done a good job with these guys this season. He's done a wonderful job. And, you know, talking to him yesterday, he sat down and gave us their whole game plan. He's a very personable guy. The, the thing that he told me having a nice little conversation with him was that you know what we gave up a bunch of points to these guys we have a lot of pride he doesn't see that happening today and the way this game has, has started to go right now it doesn't look like there's gonna be a whole lot of points scored that's the German safety Leland Brickus he's on the field so they do have 11 on now second and 25 for the Dragons and again Jackson changing the play and it's a quick pitch to Green. Green's going to pick up about five on and, second down. And let me tell you what, that's the second time, the third time they've called the audible blue. Each time they've called blue, it's a pitch right to Mike Green. Now, for the Berlin Thunder, they're not a bunch of dummies over there on defense. They're going to hear blue now one more time. They know where that ball's going. Barcelona is going to have to change some of their audibles because Berlin now knows we play this defense, they have to run that play. Joe Watch Wesley the on the stop for Berlin. Pete Watch. Voss, of course, they still use the same terminology. 
And Jackson back to throw now on third down. He's looking up. He's got Inslee, and Inslee, oh, he's overthrown. Inslee gets a push out of bounds, goes through the advertising hoarding on the sideline. Pass is incomplete, and that will bring up a punting situation for the Dragons. Very nice coverage downfield there. The safety, Billy Gustin got over there to uh, to hamper Trevor Inslee. Jarius Jackson has not thrown the ball well the last two or three weeks. For Barcelona to win, they can't just be a one-dimensional attack of Mike Green running the ball. Jarius Jackson needs to make some plays downfield. He had pretty good protection on that drop and plenty of time to throw. Bill LaFleur, the punter, is in now. And Peyton Williams is the lone was Turner back. It's a short punt. It's going to hit in front of Peyton Williams. Tony Simmons and Gilmore on the coverage, and it's down at the 10-yard line. Nice job by the Dragons punting team. Look at those gorgeous views from the blimp. I, I tell you what, you couldn't ask for a nicer day in Amsterdam. And like I said, whenever you see the blimp around a sporting event, you know it means something. Whenever you just got a regular NFL game going on, there's not a blimp. You know, you know how you see guys parachuting into games. I want to see a guy parachute through the hole in that roof. That's, I, that's accuracy. I tell you what, you, and you also have to have a lot of guts to do that. First and ten for Berlin from their own ten-yard line. They fake the reverse. Madre Hill goes up the middle. He's going to pick up about three. Stopped by Jim Manuel. The thing that Madre Hill was telling us was that early in the year, he wasn't getting but about six, seven, eight carries a game. And he couldn't get into a rhythm. The offensive line wasn't in a rhythm. The more times he carries the ball, the better he and his offensive line feel. Second and eight for Berlin. Three wide receivers. Quinn back to throw. It's looking short to Hill. It's knocked down. Was it caught? It is caught. They're wrestling for it. Tito Simpson, the return. He's got a touchdown. Tito Simpson's going berserk. No, he doesn't. First down on the one yard line. It's that screenplay we watched all week on film. intercepted by the defense. Down by contract, first down. They're calling Tito Simpson down, but he doesn't care. The backup defensive end has made the big play. We talked all week. Boy, it's so hard to run a screen in this league. You don't have the time, the practice time, the film time to be able to time things out. I saw more screens get thrown for losses or balls knocked down than I saw completed. And here's a great example. Sammy Williams does a good job on him. He just gets the hand up. Yep. And first down for the Dragons, Mike Green takes it over the middle, and he's going to be short of the goal. Stopped by Dax Strohmeyer. And that's Keo Simpson's play of the season right there. So, second down at the one-yard line. So, here once again, watch Tito's arm. That's when an offensive lineman just feels helpless. You do a nice job blocking, your guy comes up with an interception. There was movement, the flags are going. Jarius Jackson sneaks in, but it's going to be against the Dragons offside. And you know, with hands like that, Tito Simpson should start thinking about playing tight end. Well, I tell you what, he made a nice job. He did a nice job knocking the ball up in the air, but an even better job coming down with the ball. And that's got to hurt the Dragons now. That's the second penalty against them that's costing them yardage. Here we motion to put it back at the six yard line. You saw the umpire Andre Wash making the call. I'm not quite sure why there has to be so much discussion. It looked like the call was made right off the bat, and now somebody's trying to talk somebody out of a call that they already made. But let me tell you what the players are scrutinized on every play, the referees are scrutinized. Offense, number seven. These guys were specially selected for the game because they're the best in the league. They turned in the best performance. They graded out the best. A lot of times you wonder if there's anybody who watches the officials. Trust me, there are. Game clock for two minutes, 24 seconds. 224. And after every game, they sit down with a supervisor and they go over every call they made and every call they missed. And then they watch the film over and over, and they get ready for the next week. So they're graded just like every player out there on the field is. Berlin defense gets a break. Barcelona will have second and goal from the six-yard line now. Staying three wide receivers. 
Mike Green is the tailback. 388. 388. Green takes the pitch. He's looking for room, and he's still not going to find any. He can't cut in. He's thrown for a loss. The first man in, Billy Gustin, the safety. And Billy Gustin was with us last year trying out for the Dallas Cowboys. He's a guy who comes up and makes a lot of plays. He's had a right. very nice season. Right, 36. Right, 36. We got to get in the end zone. Run a good route. Listen up. Right, 36 on the color, the color, right? Color. On the color now, Jarius Jackson, right 36, Dale. Two-yard loss, third and goal from the eight. Timeout, Berlin. There's a second charge timeout. The Thunder take a timeout. 30 second timeout. 30 seconds. And the thing, the thing you do not like to see for Berlin is that you've wasted two Time. timeouts on defense oh. because you oh. haven't had the right personnel or the right number right. of people no, out no. on the field. What? I'm fine. Right 36, yeah. okay? Let's make a play. Like what we did, we it was on quick. Don, Donnie jumped outside, I was yeah. on three. Was on but three. Donnie jumped outside. Yeah. All right, let's go. They were trying to draw Berlin offside close to the goal. And I tell you what, as an offensive lineman, yeah. you want to get up on the line and you want to go. And whenever the quarterback holds the ball for, for a little bit too long, you're a little antsy down on the one yard line, you want to get into your guy and drive him into the end zone. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, tough. tough. Donnie Young, hey, an all-league performer, had a nice right, season. You don't want to see a penalty down inside the one-yard line because it takes you out of the touchdown scenario. Third and goal now from the nine-yard line for the Dragons. Two wide receivers left, one run. Jackson now short to Tony Simmons. And Simmons is going to be to stop short of the goal. Billy Gustin again in on the stop. And what Berlin's done such a nice job of doing the last couple weeks watching film is they'll let you complete the pass on third down. But they will defend either the first down marker or the goal line in this situation. They're going to give you the five yard pass to Tony Simmons here. But what you're going to see is the ball is completed and there's four Berlin Thunder guys there to make the tackle. Jesus Angoy, the former FC Barcelona goalkeeper, is in for the field goal. His father-in-law, Johan Cruyff, tossed the coin at the beginning of the game. It's a low snap, but it doesn't bother Angoy. The kick is good, and it's 4-3. to three. Berlin leading Barcelona. And now let's take a look at the final standings in NFL Europe. Remember, the Barcelona Dragons finished as the regular season champions. They had an 8-2 record. The Berlin Thunder were second at 6-4. Dale, you saw most of the teams in the league. What was your thought overall? Well, I tell you what, it's interesting because I saw the Barcelona Dragons play the week after they had clinched. They played Scotland. They came out and played a great game. To me, the hardest game to play is the game after you clinch a playoff berth, a World Bowl berth. Whatever it is that you clinch, it's hard to play. But the, the thing about this league is going into the last week of the season, there were three teams and a possibility of a fourth fighting for that second World Bowl spot, which is exactly what you want going into the last weekend. And the strange thing here is the Dragons won three games on the road, the Thunder won two games on the road, Ryan won one game on the road, and nobody else won a road game. Tough to win on the road here because of travel, because of crowd noise. It's just difficult. So Eric Olsen now to kick off for the Barcelona Dragons. Ahmed Merritt is deep for Berlin, and it's a short kick. It's going to be taken short by Corey Bridges, and he's brought down at the 33-yard line by Sean Morey and Monte Foote, the former Scottish Claymore's linebacker. We'll be back in just a second. But what I need to talk about here a little bit is that you turn the ball over on the one yard line going in for a touchdown. Berlin feels great holding them to a field goal. It's almost like a victory for Berlin right now. They lost no momentum whatsoever. First and 10, 36 yard line for Berlin. Madre Hill on the fake, Quinn with the quick pass. Dante Dwayne Jones with the catch. Down at the 40 by Dante Brown. Pick up a four, second and six for Berlin. 
Berlin just needs to get back into their rhythm of their offense. They've done fine so far. If you let a turnover like that affect you, it could really put you in a hole. But I don't think Peter Voss is going to let Jonathan Quinn stay down for too long. Two wide receivers left. Quinn now on the naked bootleg. Looking downfield, he's got a receiver. And it's caught by Demetrius Brown. He's brought by down by Dante Brown, but there are flags in the backfield, and the call will go against Berlin. You're going to see Sammy Williams just toss Ramil Connor down to the ground. He's going to get called for holding. Holding. Offense, number 72, 10 yards, repeat second down. Sammy Williams had a tough game with Ramil Connor in the second game Barcelona against Berlin. He did, but uh, his coaches say that he's their best offensive lineman. He's awful strong. What happens here is he, he doesn't need to throw him down. You talk to a ref, you say, what Again. is holding? The only time they're going to call holding now is if it's at the point of attack or if it's blatant. He was out in the wide open there. He threw his guy down to the ground. They're going to call it. And that's the end of the first quarter. It's 4-3 to the Berlin Thunder. We'll be back. He said there's going to be some old photos, and he wanted to pick it up. for the Berlin Thunder on their 30-yard line. And if you were watching, there were photographs of Jack Patel and his son Bobby, who's the offensive coordinator for the Thunder, and it's a swing pass to Madre Hill. He breaks the first tackle. He's brought down from behind by Tim Engelhardt. Nice job of pursuit by the defensive tackle, but a big gain for Berlin. A nice move by Madre Hill there. Sean Moray came up and tried to make the tackle. You're going to see that Sean Moray is a little bit more suited to be playing wide receiver than he is defensive back, but Madre Hill really has something to prove this game. Take up of 14, that makes it third and two for Berlin. They send Merritt and Jones to the right, Heckenbach to the left. Black 42! Black 42! Nearly motion from Barcelona, the pitch to Rodnick Phillips, and Phillips is brought down. Could be just short of a first down. It looks like he'll miss it by about a yard. Juwan Armour comes up there from a safety position, makes a, a wonderful tackle in the backfield. Juwan Armour, one of the better defensive players for Barcelona, and he's one of their playmakers. Juwan Armour, a linebacker, trying to convert to safety. And he comes up and he fills. Barcelona's guessing with Berlin as to, as to which side they're going to run, trying to get that eighth man up in the box. Juwan Armour not only comes up, but he makes the tackle. The punter is Brian Moorman, one of two Berlin players to make the all-league team. They felt hard done by, and Moorman gets off a low line drive kick that Trevor Inslee takes at the 13 and heads up the left sideline with a lot of running room. And all of a sudden, it's just Moorman to make the tackle. Inslee sidesteps him, but he's brought down by Kim Cucci, the reserve running back. Trevor Inslee did this a couple weeks ago against Scotland. He, it, it was the big momentum changer in that game. It got Barcelona. Off the schneid, they went down, scored a touchdown on it. Same thing they're going to hope happens here. And Inslee, who had that crackback penalty, has just made up for it now and take another look at how he did it. Barcelona takes their special teams very seriously. Yesterday during practice, that's all they did was special teams. Coach McNell, he's a special teams coach. So obviously, he knows the importance of it. He knows how much time you need to spend on it. And right there, they have great field position. First and 10 on Berlin's 38-yard line now. Barcelona send two wide receivers right. Roderick Robinson is the quarterback. He will take the second quarter, as he has done all season. And he's looking downfield, and he's got Carlos Rosado, the Mexican wide receiver. He makes the catch at the 20. Billy Gustin in with the tackle, but that's a huge first down. Roderick Robinson, who's played the second quarter of every game this season, when you talk to him, he says, I like coming in in the second quarter. Here we go. Jarius Jackson Here we go. comes over. He Here tells go. me what right he sees. 61. I get a chance on, on. to kind of calm down a little bit, see what coverages we're getting. 
And as the season's gone along, go. he's gotten better and better. Oh, Carlos three, Rosado three, missed most three, of the three. season through injury. His Set. first catch of the year, Green, first and 10 at the 20. Green, 88, hut. Robinson on the draw. Green's got some space. He cuts back inside and gets stopped. A nice bit of tackling work from 53, Joe O'Neill. Interesting how Green always falls forward. He always falls forward, but you look at the Berlin defense, and their defensive coordinator, Dave Duggan, said, we need to be able to stop Mike Green with our front seven. We do not want to bring a defensive back up in the box to form an eight-man front, because then we leave our quarterbacks hanging out for the big pass play. Green picked up four in second and six. Robinson now looks for Rosado again. He makes another catch, and he's downed immediately oh, by feet. Peyton Williams at about the 12. It'll be third and two. Roderick Robinson coming in looking exactly like Jonathan Quinn did to start the game. He's in a nice little rhythm. Three-step drops, get the ball out, let his receivers make a play. Now here's going to be a big third down. Five, eight, Carlos block. Rosado has labored eight, in the shadow four, of Marco eight, Martos for eight, years. Right he doesn't over, have the speed five, that Martos does. Oh, 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 Hurry up, hurry up, his hurry up. Running. Third heard, down and two. You heard Naked hey, block might. there. You're going to watch Roderick Robinson aye, come. Aye, aye, aye. I am. Oh. And Robinson I'm saw out. defensive backs hold the line of scrimmage and didn't like that. He takes a timeout. That's two each now. And what you're going to see again is that Barcelona, with a 35 second play clock, ran out of time. Welcome back to Amsterdam for three Barcelona trailing Berlin, but the Dragons have the ball third down and two at the 12. Last time they were down in the red zone, Berlin held them to a field goal. Set. Green 88. Green 88. What? Fakes the give to Green. Robinson on the bootleg, and it's dropped <laughs> out of bounds by Brad Freeman. Hey. Peyton Williams on the coverage. Let's go, Brad. And you heard that from Rodrick. You heard that from Rodrick because that is a play that you need to make. It's the naked bootleg. Berlin red run. Rodrick actually probably could have ran for the first down, but he had an easy pass to Brad Freeman for the first down. You need to make those plays if you're going to win the World Bowl. So Jesus Eingoy in to make to attempt his second field goal of the game. This will be a 29-yarder. Lafleur is the holder. Brad Freeman, who just dropped the pass, is the long snapper. Snap is good, and the kick is good, and Barcelona are in the lead, six to four. Jack McNeil doesn't look happy, but he's got the lead. We'll be back. And welcome back. World Bowl trophy, week one, Barcelona won in Berlin, 21-14. Mike Green, a big rushing day. Week six, Barcelona won, but they weren't actually as dominant as the stats, as the score might indicate. No, they weren't, but the thing that you're going to notice there in both games is Mike Green gained almost 300 yards rushing. You don't do that in NFL Europe without dominating the game. In seven games this season in NFL Europe, a back has had over 100 yards, and the team he plays for has won all seven games. Eric Olsen now will kick off for Barcelona. It's another short kick. Ahmad Merritt takes it on the run at the 13. Makes a little move and heads outside, trying to pick up a block from Corey Bridges. He doesn't get it. Looked like Jeff Popovich in on the tackle at the 27-yard line. So Berlin now trailing 6-4. Will take over. And since the first drive of the first quarter when Berlin moved the ball down pretty crisply down in their territory they've struggled you need to see Jonathan Quinn step up right here take a little leadership and make some plays happen Sean Murray has just come on the field so the Dragons start out in a nickel defense Berlin with three wide receivers Jonathan Quinn pointing out the protection and now he's back to throw it's a draw Madre Hill breaks a tackle he's picked up first down yardage and then some brought down by Craig Miller and Sean Morey. The offensive line did a great job, especially the left side of the offensive line. Jay Haygood, T.J. Washington, and Ryan 
Kalich, you're going to see Jay Hagan throw Keith Washington upfield. T.J. Washington does a nice job bumping off Tim Engelhart, getting up to the middle linebacker Corey Atkins for a nice game. First and 10 at the 40 for Berlin. Quinn hands to Hill, and Hill's not going to pick up much. Corey Atkins, the middle backer, met him head on. And he's a Dallas guy, or used to be. Yes, he tried out with us last year, and they moved him from outside linebacker when their middle linebacker got hurt. He's played the last three games now, middle linebacker. He says he's feeling a little more comfortable. He likes it inside where all the action is, and he thinks it'll help him in the Atlanta Falcons <laughs> training camp. He took the place of Munana Vita Kazadi when he was injured and out for the season, second and 10 for Berlin. And Quinn's going to throw. <laughs> A nice play coming over the top by Anthony Marlboro, the all-league defensive back. It was intended for Dwayne Jones. And you know, you know Jack McNell feels real good with Anthony Marlboro back in the lineup because they were hanging out a little bit when he was hurt. They were down to slim pickets in the, in the defensive backfield. Yeah. Picked out Rootfield coming right up the middle, putting a nice lick on Jonathan Quinn. Jonathan Quinn. Takes a look and keeps on ticking. Third and ten at the 40. Wait, We've got an extra football down here on the field. Could have done like when you were a little kid. One of the wide receivers go down there and pick it up and <laughs> score a touchdown while the other ball's on the other side of the field. Sometimes Berlin puts the ball in the air so much they need two footballs. So as we said, third and ten at the 40. Three wide receivers for Berlin. 81, Corey Bridges is the lone receiver up top. And Quinn's going to throw. He's looking for Corey Bridges over the middle, and it's going to be overthrown. Nice coverage by Anthony Marlboro. And it seems like the Barcelona pass rush, running all those games and getting some pressure on Quinn has kind of got him out of that comfortable rhythm that he started the game off. There, he threw that ball 10 yards over the intended receiver. And it looked like they had the rush under control at the beginning. So Brian Mormon into punt. Remember, Trevor Inslee had a big return on his last punt. Snaps a little high, but he gets a nice kick off. It's hanging up there. Inslee's not going to touch it. It's going to go out of bounds at about the 15 yard, at the 20 yard line, where Barcelona will take over on down, take over after the punt. Well, for sitting here all week going, what's the score going to be? Is it going to be a high-scoring affair? Both offenses have done a great job scoring points. Right now, it's been kind of a defensive battle. And you can vote for the World Bowl 9 MVP if you want to. You just have to log on to worldbowl.com. You'll find it easy to do. It may be a little fun, but wait until the fourth quarter to do it. Just fire up the computer now. First and 10 at the 19. Mike Green, and he's got some running room. And that's a real typical Mike Green run. That's exactly what Mike Green loves to do. If you watch him, he reminds me a little bit of Emmett Smith, where he gets the entire defense over-pursuing, running to the right, and then he cuts back against the grain, finds the opening, and shoots it up in there. He's a very patient runner, but when he sees the hole, he explodes through it. And a lot of people thought he was simply too big when he came out of college. He's lost weight, he's running better now, he's had a great season. That's an NFL Europe record breaking Lawrence Phillips' mark. First and 10 for the Dragons. Robinson now, Tony Simmons with the catch, and Simmons up to the 42. He's brought down by Dwayne Stukes, and the linebacker, Joe Wesley, was in there as well. Let me tell you something, Sean Payton right there should have had an interception. Roderick Robinson holds on the ball a little bit too long. Sean Payton got the other hand out there. He could have been going the other way for a touchdown. Roderick Robinson knows he got away with one there. First and 10 at the 41. Robinson on the draw to Green. Makes a little running room for himself. Gains about two, maybe three yards. He's stopped by Jamie Watkins, the safety. And other than the one run, the front four of Berlin has done a nice job. Coach Voss said, if you see our defensive lineman with a bunch of tackles, you'll know we played the run well. If our defensive backs are our leading tacklers, we're not going to win this game. And Jamie Watkins came up quickly to pull eye that good play up front. Second and 43. 
Two linebackers coming for Berlin. Roderick Robinson's got some speed, and he's going to run for the sticks, and he's going to get a first down. Literally ran right out of bounds over the sticks. Berlin bringing that double A gap blitz. That's two linebackers coming right up the middle. Yes, and what they did, they did that 12 times last week. Barcelona knows for them to have success today, they have to pick that up, and it helps when your quarterback has the athletic ability to be able to get outside. So now we've got the, where did they spot the ball and go out? And he may have been just short of the sticks. You notice they dropped the sticks as he ran for them. Tip of the ball just made it. It'll be first down Barcelona at the 49. It's a good thing that they got that one chain fixed because with the broken leg, it might not have been a first down. <laughs> good call, Dale. So the Dragons now in Berlin territory at the 49. Roderick Robinson making this offense move in the second quarter. Two receivers up top. Gilmore, the lone wide receiver down on the right. Blue! Blue! Let's see if they stay with the same model. A pitch to the right. And there it is, and it looked like Berlin read it. Green just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Axel Cruz, the German kicker, was on the field yelling for a penalty as it looked like a Lester Pope wrestled Warren down. Oh, Lester Pope got away with the hold there, but let me tell you something. Berlin's defense, they're not a bunch of dummies out there. That's the fourth time now they've heard blue, the blue audible, and that's the fourth time they've ran to the right. If Barcelona does not change that up, they're gonna, Berlin's gonna line up in that defense every time and make Barcelona run to the right. Mike Green just about got back to the line of scrimmage. It's second and 10 at the 49. Robinson's back to throw. Short over the middle, Rosado with the catch. And he's brought down quickly by Mark Megna, the former Dragon linebacker, Billy Gustin up as well. And Sorry, that was Inslee with the catch. It's interesting talking to Inslee when I was in Barcelona. 80, right, him, 80, him 80, and James right, Whalen 80. had a little bit of a competition going between each other, who's gonna lead the league in receptions. And, and Inslee told Whalen, hey, you're nothing but, you do nothing but catch a bunch right, of curls 80. and okay, outs, okay, you're a possession right. receiver. Well, that's kind of what Inslee's turned into, gaining five and six yards of pop. The pot called the kettle black. Right Didn't 80, 80 now for Barcelona. Hunt. There it is, looking quick. It's now to Inslee. He stretches for the first down, but stays inbounds. Clock keeps moving. Nice play. That was an awesome catch by Trevor Inslee. He turned his head as the ball was right there. Nice throw by Roderick Robinson. He read the defense. He held on for an extra second so Inslee could get open against, against uh, Peyton there. Leaps forward for the first down. Two Indianapolis Colts working together. I know the Colts have a scout here. He's got to be pleased with what he's seeing. First and 10 now, 37 yard line. Robinson back again. Right leg is over the middle, looks over the middle. All alone, Trevor Inslee, he found a space and it's complete. Tackle made by Megna again, the linebacker on Inslee's a tough matchup. Well, I tell you what, the thing is, what I like to see is Roderick Robinson talking to him. What has happened with him is as the season's gone along, his vision has improved. Instead of just seeing one receiver, he's seeing the entire receiving core. The game slows down for you a little bit as you understand routes and what defensive coverages you're facing. He's improved a ton. First and 10, 22 for the Dragons. Robinson short drop, quick one to Tony Simmons, but there's not much room for Simmons. Nice tackling by number 23, Wade Davis. This almost looks like the first drive that Berlin did of the game where they're completing short passes, they're moving the ball, they're getting first downs. What they need to do is put it in the end zone. And Tony Simmons was out of sync for a while. Looks like they're trying to get him the ball and just right. hope he can make eight something happen. Wide choice. Don't quit, don't quit, ready? And you just heard their right eight option. Roderick Robinson's gonna take the ball to the right side and he's either gonna pitch it to Mike Green or he's gonna keep it himself around right end. This is Jarius Jackson's play. An option route for Trevor Inslee. Inslee makes the first guy miss. Doesn't pick up much after the catch, but another good catch and good throw. And what Barcelona does is they have a built-in audible system where if the receiver and the quarterback see the quarterback playing off, they make eye contact. As you can see, the quarterback's coming blitzing. Inslee knows he's got an easy catch. Roderick Robinson throws the ball out to him. They pick up eight yards. Just short of first down yardage. 
Wade Davis on the stop. So the Dragons third in about one. Big play for the Dragons. They've been down here twice. This is fumbled snap. Robinson trying to control it. They've been down here three times now, and they still haven't been able to get a touchdown. They keep on self-destructing once they get inside the 20-yard line. There, Roderick Robinson again called an audible. The noise factor here in the arena, it being a, a, a basically a closed dome, is so loud. The offensive line thought they heard one thing. Roderick Robinson, you're going to see Mirandi brings the ball up a little bit too soon before Robinson expects it. Consequently, a fumbled snap, and now they got to try and kick another field goal. Third attempt now for Jesus Angoy. This one from 33 yards out. Snap is fine. Angoy, no mistake, through the middle, and the Barcelona Dragons are up nine to four. Sounds like a baseball game. It does. You know, when you get that four-point field goal involved, like I said when it first happened, it throws everything out of kilter. And Jesus Angoy, as you've seen, has a World Bowl record with his third kick. The former soccer player, <laughs> you know what Jack McNeil's saying there. Yeah, you know, he, he's a little bit frustrated because they've had the ball on the one-yard line. They have a penalty to knock him back. They get the ball down inside here again, and another mental mistake sets him back. He knows that to win this game, they've got to cut down on those dramatically. Now, what does Berlin have to do when they come out on this series? Well, what they need to do is they need to continue to move the ball like they did the first series of the game. They need to get Quinn back into a nice little rhythm, and Peter Voss knows that's what he needs to do. He's going to call some plays. They're going to be able to be easy completions, get um, Jonathan Quinn's uh, confidence level back up, and hopefully move the ball down here, because again, it's going to be a two-minute drill here. They want to score some points before half to go in with a little bit of momentum. I think one thing we ought to say, we talked in the pregame about the crowd factor, how they might be rooting for Barcelona, but you've got to say the noise level is nothing like it is when the Amsterdam Admirals are playing at home, even though there's more people in the stands. No, it's an, it's an awful lot like a Super Bowl, where you have a lot of people there, but they don't have an allegiance to either team. So consequently, the noise level is not quite as loud as if you were playing at a home stadium. Eric Olsen to kick off for the Dragons, who lead 9-4. It's another short kick. Ahmed Merritt takes it at the 12, heads up the middle. He breaks the tackle from Splutsky, and he's still going. And finally brought down at the 34 by Troy Pelshek, the linebacker. But he met the Russian linebacker, Mikhail Slutsky, and stood him up. I tell you what, I was in Barcelona for a little bit, and I saw Slutsky on the beach. The guy is built. He looks like he spends about four hours a day in the weight room, and uh, he looks awful good oh, out there on the beach. Smash. I kept my shirt on while I was down there. And Ahmed Merritt, about 5'10 and 193, did a nice job. First 50, and 10 50. at the 33. Right, right there, D. Set. You hear Quinn 19. calling the protection. That's it. And he's going to throw on first down. Has a lot of time, dumps it off to Madre Hill, and Hill has brought down Corey Atkins with a nice time. And that's what we said that Peter Moss would do, get an easy completion. What you got to give credit there is to the Berlin offensive line. They did a nice job of clearing out the middle. And as an offensive lineman, if you can clear out the middle of the a defensive line, the quarterback can step up and throw the ball. That's a two-minute warning. We'll be back in just a minute. in Amsterdam. It's 9-4. to four. Barcelona, Bill for Berlin. The Thunder have the ball after the kickoff. First and 10, just short of the 39-yard line. They're right there, right Sorry, there. Second, second and four. Right At the two-minute warning. That's it. Quinn back to throw. Steps forward. Short one to York. Heckenbach, he's going to have the first down and get out of bounds to stop the clock at the 44-yard line. And the thing is, what, what happens here again is you're not throwing the ball any more than five yards down the field, but it is, is so confidence building for this offense. And Jonathan Quinn, because you can see him throw the ball, drops back with a little bit of pocket presence, and you know he feels good about himself. Three wide receivers to the left, first and 10 at the 50. Hecking back, the German is the wide man. Quinn now back to throw again. He's under pressure and scrambling, looking for a receiver. Nice catch over the middle, number 19. 
Demetrius Brown, Sammy Hamoudi, the Dragons' French safety, makes the tackle. But nice job by Demetrius Brown getting himself open. Yeah, Jonathan Quinn did a nice job avoiding the rush. Keith Washington did, does a nice job again. Him and Engelhart working in tandem, putting pressure up the middle. Jonathan Quinn, not noted for his elusiveness, does a nice job buying a little bit of time and throwing the ball downfield. First down to Berlin at the 36. Quinn back again. He's under pressure again. There's going to be a holding call. He throws the ball away. There's no intentional grounding. The quarterback was out of the pocket. The ball went past the line of scrimmage. And you hear Terry McCauley waving off the second flag, but that first one is going to be for real. It's going to be Sammy Williams again on the hold. And we saw him in their last game against Barcelona. He had a hard time with Ramil Connor. It looks like Ramil Connor's giving him everything he wants. Again, that's his second penalty. Ramil Connor putting a heck of a pass rush on. With his elusiveness, he's got a little bit more speed than most defensive ends. Holding offense, number 72, 10 yards, still first down. Connor thinking he may have a good shot at the Miami Dolphins place after this season is over. Sammy Williams, he and a lot of his teammates and coaches thought he should have been on the all-league team at offensive tackle. Yeah, Coach Voss said, you know, my three best players are Sam Williams, Madre Hill, and Jonathan Quinn. He felt bad. That Sammy Williams didn't make the All League team. Check it down, Jets Ace. But if Sam Williams should have made the All League team, Ramil Connor should be on there too. <laughs> Fitty, Fitty. First and 20 now at the 46. Right there, set. Four wide right receivers for the Berlin Thunder. And Quinn's taking the five step drop. He's looking deep for Dante Jones. Jones has separation. Jones has a touchdown. Touchdown. Anthony Marlboro, the man who's beaten, signaling he was out of bounds, but no question about that one. What a throw by Jonathan Quinn. He threw the ball the only place that you can throw it. He, he, threw, that ball, he threw that ball 55 yards in the air. And you know, everyone talks about Barcelona's receivers having speed. Dante Jones showed, showed some, Dwayne Jones showed some speed there. They got, they got some timeout. speed. Berlin, it was a third and final charge timeout will be a 30-second timeout. And what Coach hey. Voss is doing here, he called timeout with the four-point field goal again. It puts different scoring combinations into play. They're going to go for two here because they have a chart. Their coaches have a chart up in the box that says, OK, if the score is this, you go for two. If it's, if it's this, you kick one point extra point. 11-9 doesn't really do you any good. Unless someone hits a safety, he's still got a tie. So they take their third time out, and Berlin job, will baby. go for the two-point conversion. You got the corner. You got that was the flag. beautiful to watch. It's in, just as easy as pregame warm -up. I was going to say, it almost looked like their pat-and-go oh, drill in pregame, where he right just over. threw the ball into the end zone over. and did a nice job. Back so the two-point conversion attempt from the Thunder. Three wide receivers. Madre Hill, the setback. No. Yeah, 50-50. Right there, Sand. Red 19. Red 10. Quinn, short drop, tries to fade in the corner, but overthrows on the Barrett. So the score stays at 10 to 9. And you he hear Pete Voss calling for a squib kick. Let's take another look at the touchdown. Great protection. All starts up front. The offensive line keeps Barcelona's defensive line off of Jonathan Quinn. Anthony Marlboro actually has very nice coverage on the play. And Jones just pulls away from him. NFL scouts love to see that separation speed. And then not only that, but have the presence to know where he is, get both feet down inbounds, and make the catch in the end zone. And such a good toss by Jonathan Quinn. For another touchdown. Just to add to his already incredible streak of nine touchdowns in the last couple of weeks, he is on a roll. He had nine in two games. He had 10 in the last 10 quarters he played. He went the whole first quarter without one. He did, and, and that was, again, the coach just said, I asked Peter Voss, and I said, has Jonathan Quinn improved that much? He said, no, I don't think he has. I think the team around him has gotten a lot better. He said earlier in the year, drop balls, missed assignments, wrong routes, things like that caused us to not do as well as we could. We're getting better as the season goes along, and they're playing well right now. Dwayne Jones on the phone to the Seattle Seahawks. And we've got the squib kick. You heard Pete Voss call for it. The Dragons let it go. Maury finally picks it up on the 18. 
and he's gonna have a lot of work to do to turn the corner. And his former teammate Mark Megna brings him down at about the 31 yard line. And Magna gives him a little shove just to let him know. Well, you know what? Whenever you play against former teammates, you want to make sure that you have a good game. That's the man who's going to star in the halftime show here at the stadium. Coolio. Coolio. One of your, one of your favorites, Dale. Now, are you going to be down on the uh, stage I heard with him, Mike, doing, doing a little bit of his new brand of dancing? Whatever Coolio does, I'm down with him. <laughs> So Barcelona now first and 10 at the 32. Roderick Robinson, the quarterback, Rashawn Spikes is in at tailback for the Dragons, four wide receivers. And Robinson again, trouble with the snap. Looked like Jesse Warren almost stepped, or Thomas Washington, I think, almost stepped on the ball. And Roderick Robinson's the guy who comes up with it. But that's two in a row where he's had snap trouble. That is, and I tell you what, John Morandi, the thing about it is that when you have two quarterbacks, you have two snap counts, you have two ball handlers. Things change, and the center is the one who has to adjust. Two-yard loss for the Dragons, 40 seconds to play. The draw fools nobody, and Rashawn Spikes is thrown for about a five-yard loss. And Morandi, of course, is another Colts guy, just like Robinson and Inslee. Exactly, and he's had a very nice season. You don't want to end your season on a down note like this. Now, if you're Barcelona right here, you let this clock run. Berlin is out of timeouts. You don't want to run a pass play or anything that's going to give Berlin the chance to block a punt and get the ball back before halftime. We got to put it back together like it was. Do it. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Pete Boz heading for the side. The end of the first half. First half winds down. The Berlin Thunder, 10 points. Jack McNeil, Barcelona Dragons, 9. Julio is going to take the stage, and we'll be back after he does. 10-9, Berlin leading Barcelona. We've survived the Julio experience. There was so much dry ice on the field, he could have been called Coldio. But the Dragons will take the opening, the opening kickoff of the second half from Berlin, who lead by one point. Kicking off Scott Bentley, your four-point field goal. Has made much of the difference here. Deep spikes and Mori, another squib kick from Bentley. It's going to be taken by Rodriguez, the tight end. Rodriguez reverses his field. He's brought down at the 37-yard line. David Bird, the former Scottish Claymore defensive back who joined Berlin late in the season, makes the tackle. And Rodriguez is just adjusting his pads. Look at the first half stats, Dale, and what do they tell you? They really don't tell you a whole lot. They tell you it's going to be a close game. You see two turnovers by Berlin, one by Barcelona. Barcelona didn't cash in for the one-yard line like you thought they would. Both teams one for five on third down conversions, and these are the two highest powered offenses in the league. First and 10, 36, Jarius Jackson on the option. He cuts inside. He's going to pick up about three. Joe O'Neill, the middle linebacker, on the stop. And it looks like they're prepared for that option. Well, it does. You know, I mean, it, it's a four or five yard game. The thing is, you put the ball in Jarius Jackson's hands, and it's either him or Mike Green. You got to like your chances with either of those guys. Sam Latigliano told us, look for that play quite a few times. That's only a second time they've run it today. The Dragons wanted to put the ball into Mike Green's hands as much as possible, Sam told us. Second and seven at the 39. Jackson short drop, long throw for Tony Simmons, who gets under it, makes the catch, flag comes down. And the preliminary signal is the pass interference against Berlin. A great play by Tony Simmons. Great play by Tony Simmons. And what I really hate to see is a cornerback, in this case, Wade Davis, Looking at the receiver, instead of when the receiver, Tony Simmons, looks back for the ball, the cornerback needs to look back for the ball. Pass interference, defense, number 23, penalties decline, first down. There's a reason the receiver looks back to the ball. The ball's coming. Wade Davis and every other cornerback out there needs to understand that. You turn and look for the ball, so if it's underthrown, you can make a play on it. Tony Simmons, the man who made the play. Once again, the Dragons are in the red zone. First and 10 at the 20 yard line. They haven't been able to get a touchdown yet. Hey, 
Jackson is looking to go for one. He gets away twice now. Still three guys to bring him down. He's going to pick up almost two yards, and he should have lost a bundle. Well, you see Antoine Young and you see John Harris. They're getting up very gingerly after colliding while missing Jarius Jackson. He is a big, strong, mobile quarterback. When he decides to run with the ball, he's every bit as good as most halfbacks in this league. They had a lot of problems with their there passing attack the last three weeks, but they still won two of those games. Hey, Joe, the right. Five and, naked block on one -on -one, right? and right here, it's five naked blocks. So look for Jarius Jackson to fake a, a handoff easy, easy. to Mike Green. Hey, hey. They just Sunday, changed Sunday. the play at the line of scrimmage. It's the pitch to Green. He cuts inside and gets to about the 15, a pickup of two or three, and that's going to bring up third down. Antoine Young, the defensive end, with the stop. Runs out of time, but doesn't run out of room. Escapes. Or some hit. And you got the replay with the full benefit of the Fox television call from Kurt Menefee in the booth right next door to us. He's got a loud voice. Yes, he does. So it's going to be third down and about six now for the Dragons at the 16. Jackson straight back to throw. Doesn't have a receiver open. Looks over the middle. Inslee can't get his hands on it. Looked like the ball was behind him. It did. It had been a nice catch, but you'd hope that your best receiver, Trevor Inslee, would be able to make a play on that. It's third down. You need to come up with a big play. You go to your playmakers. He's one of your playmakers. Guy who converts third downs into first downs. Jesus Angoy has a chance now to add to his World Bowl record. Four times the Dragons have been in the red zone. Four times Jesus Angoy has come on the field to attempt field goals. This one will come from 33 yards out. Snaps a little low. It's put down and it's blocked. And it's a loose ball. It's picked up by Watkins. And Watkins rattles to Williams. And Williams is out of bounds at the 36-yard line, a huge play for Berlin. A huge play. You're going to probably see called back a little bit here. Berlin still has the ball, but they had a forward lateral. I think that's what the flag on the field is for. The flag is back at the spot of lateral, about the 17-yard line. Jesus Angoy getting in there to help make the tackle. He doesn't have to do that very often. You see the umpire, Andre Wash, discussing things with Jerry Bird. There's no the foul line, the judge. play. The ball was thrown backwards. And First down, Berlin. Terry Time McCauley out. decides it didn't go forward. We've got a timeout. It's still 10 to 9, and the Dragons, Jesus Angoy, can't add to his field goal record. Billy Gustin, it was, who got his hand to the ball. And the Thunder have the ball here in Amsterdam. The sun is out just for Dale Hellestray. And you're going to see on this field goal here, Billy Gustin. Makes himself skinny, sliding in between the tight end and the tackle, gets a hand on it. It's interesting how certain guys have a knack for getting their hands on a ball. Billy Gustin is one of those guys. That lateral didn't look very, very backwards to me, but the flag was waved off. Berlin have the ball. It's first and 10 at the 36. Three wide receivers for Berlin. I got 50, 50. Right here. Barcelona Pitch. with three linebackers. Right 19. Attack. Quinn fakes the draw, puts the ball up, going long. Left side, Marlboro in the coverage, intended for Dwayne Jones. Couldn't get it this time. Jones couldn't pull away from Anthony Marlboro. No, Anthony wasn't going to get beat on the same exact play two times in the same game. What I like to see there is a Berlin offensive line. They did what they call solid blocking there. The three inside guys blocked the two defensive tackles and the middle linebacker, allowing Jonathan Quinn great vision, being able to step up in the pocket and throw the ball down the field. Second down and 10. Dragons with five defensive backs. You saw Sean Murray coming on the field to draw. Now to Rodnick Phillips. And Phillips fumbles the ball. But he's going to be down before the ball popped out. Nice game by Phillips. There's a flag on the play. Sean Mori with the stop. They read Barcelona's nickel coverage. Well, they did. They're going to get a holding call here on number 62, Ryan Kalich. We thought he did a nice job blocking Broomfield down to the ground. Holding but offense, number 62, 10 yards, repeat second down. And I don't understand this. Talking to the referees last week, 
if you as an offensive lineman take your guy and drive him back into the ground there should not be a holding call he drove him back into the ground they did in in, in reality call holding and now they're in a second long situation second long they're looking at Rodney Phillips's left arm that's where he got hit and fumbled the ball after he went down the balls at the 26 yard line second Watch and it. 20. Quinn over the middle. Breakdown in communication with Corey Bridges. Marlboro again on the coverage. It looked like he expected his receiver, Corey Bridges, to come back to the ball. Corey turned it and rounded it off. As a wide receiver coach, you say, plant, come back to the ball. Your quarterback expects you to be there. That's not how that play worked out. Still looking at Rodnick Phillips's arm. Madre Hill is the 51, tailback. 51. It's third and 20. Quinn back again over the middle. Ahmad Merritt just short. He's caught the ball up. They're going to wave that off as an incompletion. And the crowd wanted a fumble. But it, it looked like it, but both refs had a perfect view of it. And that's what you like to see. You like to see the referees in the right position to make the call. Juwan Armour coming up with a big hit there. He can lay him off. Yes, he can. Let's take another look at that hit. Nice throw. Jawan Armour times it perfectly. Drives his shoulder into him. Ahmad Merritt loses the ball before he had full possession. So it's fourth down. Brian Mormon into punt. And Mormon gets off a good kick. Trevor Inslee going back. Waves for the fair catch and makes it falling down at the 25-yard line. Five minutes gone in the third quarter. Berlin 10, Barcelona 9. We'll be back in just a moment. Don't go away. Mr. Dam, the executive director of the NFL Players Association, Gene Upshaw. You know, you know offensive lineman Dale. He was a pretty good one. Well, he's a Hall of Famer, and I uh, had a nice visit with him yesterday. This is his first time over here in Amsterdam. He finally got a passport, he said. Came over here, gave a nice talk to both teams. And I tell you what, the players love to see important people around here, whether it be Gene Upshaw or different owners that have flown in for the game, Bob Tisch, Jerry Jones, the Dallas Cowboys, you have Terry Donahue, general manager of the 49ers. These players want to be watched. They want to know if there's people back in the United States paying attention to what they're doing over here. We were talking to Jack McNell just yesterday, and he said he really appreciated every team that takes the time to just call their guys once or twice during the year. Right, and it does not take much. Some teams do a much better job than others. You got Bill Bidwell there, are the Arizona Cardinals. Some teams take a more vested interest, and it really helps the players on the field. First and 10 for the Dragons at the 26. Jackson on the option. Green gets the pitch. And he's going to be stopped for a loss of about two. They're trying to get the ball to Mike Green, but not much is happening. Well, they, they said before the game they wanted to have the ball in his hands 25 to 30 times. Berlin, on the other hand, said, you know what? We need to stop the run with our front four. Right now, Berlin's winning that war. John Harris and Joe O'Neill on the stop. There, you see four and five Berlin Thunder in every picture that we're showing. Four and five Berlin Thunder defensive players. Mike Green has no place to go. Four wide receivers in for the Dragons on second and 12. Berlin wants to make them beat them in the air. And Jarius Jackson's going to go to the air. Look short for Marco Martos. Marcos makes the first guy miss, can't get past the second one. Dax Strohmeyer. He's going to get up Left. to about the 30, a pickup of Bruh. about four. Left. Eight draw. Here we go. Listen up. Remember what I told you? Left, eight cross, look on the color, right? You heard it. Left H cross. Obviously, you're gonna see a crossing route by either Mark one of a couple receivers. Touch. Easy, easy, easy. Red 18! Red! Different 18. color this half. It was blue Sunday, last Sunday. half. Touch. He switched to the option, and Mike Green's got some space. He's got a first down and more over the 40-yard line. Billy Gustin coming up for the tackle. And they changed the color. They're live. Each team has a live color for their audibles. The first half for Barcelona was blue. Second half, it's red. Berlin, obviously, not used to hearing the red. Again, another option. Jerry Jackson makes a nice decision here. Gets the ball in the hands of his playmaker. 
Mike Green makes a nice play, gets the first down. Good job by Donnie Young downfield. It's first and 10, 42-yard line for the Dragons. Jackson back to pass. Green, nice job of picking up the rush. And he's got Tony Simmons. Simmons turns inside. He's got room. He's down to the 10. He pulls away. It's a touchdown. Barcelona Dragons. Jack McNeil always says, we just need the guys to make plays. He keeps saying, make a play, make a play. The thing is, it was a very nice, easy route. He throws the ball out to Simmons for a nice 12-yard gain. Billy Gustin, a little bit too much ahead of himself, came up a little too aggressively. Once your safety misses the tackle, the only thing remaining is the end zone. And the Dragons are going to go for two down up ahead 15 to 10. Good. One point doing them no good. Green 88. Watch Green, Green out the play. Green went in motion. They went to the fight. He goes over the middle and it's complete to Trevor Hensley. 17 10 and all of a sudden we've got a football score. We do and the thing is yesterday in practice they ran this two point play a couple times. They looked for Green. Jarius Jackson made a nice read put it into Trevor Hensley. Kicking it to Merritt, who takes it at the nine and comes up, bridges in front of him. Merritt with one move. And he's brought down. By... And here we go. They're still working on that. They're still working on that stick. You know what? It went from white tape to now to, to black tape. and. <laughs> the first down marker and the advertisement wall are the two things that have been most seriously injured on this football field, and the advertisement signs have taken a beating all day long. The power of advertising doesn't work here. 20, first and 10 at the 21. It's a pitch to Rodnick Phillips, who's back now, and he's brought down by Troy Pelshek. Barcelona all over that one. Again, you're rotating your running backs. Madre Hill, who had a decent first half, not being able to get into a rhythm. Ronick Phillips obviously coming back from that uh, arm injury that he suffered a little bit earlier. And uh, the Barcelona defense just stringing this out. Corey Atkins coming up and making a nice play. And Dom Broomfield, the entire Barcelona defense seemed to be in the Berlin huddle. Loss of three, second and 13 at the 18. Quinn back to throw. Quick one to Ahmad Merritt. Immediately, Brown comes up, and Merritt's still on his feet. He takes another knock before Jim Emanuel brings him down. This is what they were doing at the start of the game. Exactly, and they moved the ball. Ahmad Merritt there got hit by about five Barcelona Dragons. The biggest hit coming from Donald Broomfield, coming from his defensive line position. Broomfield goes about 320. Ahmad Merritt goes maybe about 160, but Ahmad Merritt is still standing. One of the things Ken Clark teaches these guys, keep moving till the play's over. Third and about four, Quinn back to throw again. Looking over the middle for Nuno, the tight end. Maury just makes the tackle by the, just got him by the toes. Carlos Nuno, though, picks up the first down for Berlin. And again, it seems like Jonathan Quinn's getting in a nice little rhythm. He's hitting his back drop step. Patting the ball, throwing on rhythm, finding the open receiver. And, and when he is doing his job, the rest of the offense starts to click. Sammy Williams giving Quinn the protection there. It's first and 10 at the 35-yard line for Berlin. Right 19. Maury on the blitz. Quinn looks the other way, and Heckenbach can't make the catch. It's intercepted by Marlboro. Heckenbach wrestles him out of bounds, but a big turnover to the Dragons. Quinn just went right through the hands of York. And all that was was Heckenbach looked upfield. He wanted to try and make a move on the defender before he caught the ball. It's a number one rule in football. Catch the ball before you start to run. There's nothing he could do. He's standing there watching the ball helplessly. 
York hicking back to German. Anthony Marlboro with his first interception of the World Bowl. Dragons have the ball on Berlin's 39 yard line. First and 10. Jackson back to throw on first down. Good pickup of the rush. And Simmons all alone, and he's got the drops. He has the drops, and again, you can see his head looking upfield. He's thinking touchdown again. He said, as soon as I catch this ball, I'm turning upfield. Catch the ball. And Tony Simmons knows it. He's hearing your voice in his ear because he knows that's exactly what he did. Look at that view. The blimp. Gorgeous day in Amsterdam. I don't know how many times we've said that, but it's just been unbelievable for World Bowl nine. Second and 10 at the 39. Jackson back to throw again. Green again with the pickup. He's looking for Gilmore, but overthrows him in the end zone. Brian Gilmore couldn't run under that one. Brian Gilmore covered there by by uh, Dwayne Stooks. Stooks, who's been flip-flopping between cornerback and safety and safety and cornerback, says he feels comfortable at both, but he'd like to settle in to and play one of the different it. positions. Did a nice job covering downfield right speed, on a pretty go. speedy receiver. One, 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 Berlin cornerback D. Moran Cola had to go back to the States for the birth of his second child. Stooks has to play corner in the nickel situations yeah, now. Third and 10 for the Dragons. Jackson, loads of time, loads of room, signaling for receivers to get open. He's unloading to Marco Martos. Can he stay in the end zone? He got his feet down. No, he didn't. <laughs> he knew he was right up against the end line, and Marco did everything he could to keep his feet in bounds. The referee was right there to keep an eye on it. Jack McNeil looking at the scoreboard up on the side to see if he can see if the call was correct or not. Let's see if we can see it. Marco Marto sees the ball. He knows the end line's right there. And he also knows two Berlin Thunder are coming after him. The referee, as is most of the time, makes the right call. So Bill LaFleur is going to punt. Ball was at the 39. He puts a soft one up. And it's going to be fair caught by Peyton Williams at the seven yard line. Nice job by LaFleur. Berlin will take over. First and, first and 10 at the seven. And once again, Barcelona gets a turnover from Berlin. They come away with no points. Berlin has to feel very fortunate with their turnover situation. And now again, you put the ball in Jonathan Quinn's hands and you say, make something happen. The boss said, go out and have some fun, guys. And all of a sudden, this game is getting very, very serious indeed. And it hasn't been the shootout that people were expecting either. Hey, here we go. Either. Let's get this bench right here. Right, S28 pass on one on eight. S28, screen pass. pass. No, sweet pass. Watch the sweet pass here. There it is. Rodnick Phillips is going to throw. Good call, Dale. Corey Bridges just couldn't get under it. And you saw them change oh, yeah. running backs there at the last second. Madre Hill came out. Rodnick Phillips went in. Rod oh, okay. Rodnick had a little better arm than Madre. He did a nice job. <laughs> Still back over. Over on the side, it's a good thing Rodnick's left arm was the one that took the bump on the play before. Second and 10 for Berlin. Coach Voss said he would not be afraid to take some chances in this game. He's showing a few things. I look for some more here in the second half. Madre Hill now on the draw. Gets up to about the 12. Pick up a four. Ramil Connor with the tackle. Really, this is a game waiting for one team to establish themselves. It is, and you know, I, I'm watching this Berlin offensive line. In the last couple of weeks, they've gone up against Amsterdam, which has big, physical defensive linemen. Now they're going up against quick, fast defensive linemen. It's a whole different blocking technique. They're running some draws, trying to get a pass rush upfield and 50. let the running backs hey, D. find a hole. D. Third and a long six Bad. for the Thunder. Quinn looking over the middle, gets the tight end again. That's Osborne, the other tight end. He's brought down by Dante Brown, but he's got the first down. And it looks like Jonathan Quinn knows exactly where Sean Morey is. Every time Sean Morey is on one of the tight ends, it seems like Jonathan Quinn is finding either Osborne or Nuno for five, six, seven yards. But more importantly, 
converting third downs into first downs. First down, 10 yards to go for D, Berlin D, D. at the 23. D, D. Ten. Quinn calls the protection. And he's going to throw on first down. He's looking deep now for Jones. I don't care how fast Jones is, he wasn't going to get under that one. <laughs> you know, some of his receivers say, hey, you just throw the ball out there. You can't overthrow me. Some of the quarterbacks take that as a challenge and say, oh, yes, I can. He did throw that a little bit too far. Dante Brown on the coverage. One of many Broncos allocated players on this Barcelona team. This one's a screen, huh? This is a Z screen. It's going to be to one of the wide receivers. It's going to be one of those quick passes you saw earlier in the game. Red 19. Red 10. Little screen over the middle to Madre Hill. Didn't have a lot of blocking in front of him, but still picked up about six yards. Maury on the stop, along with Corey Atkins. The Barcelona defensive backs came up and covered the wide receivers, played a little press coverage, bump and run. Didn't allow the quick screen outside. Madre Hill did a nice job finding an open spot underneath. Made the catch and at least put them in a makeable third down situation. Third in the short four for the Berlin Thunder. Red 19. Percent. Quinn looking over the middle now, swings one out to Madre Hill, but Dante Brown was right there. There's a flag in the middle of the field. Which means holding usually by the offensive line, but it looks like it's going to be against Barcelona this time. Illegal hands? Illegal, illegal hands to the face, and on third down, that's going to give them an automatic first down. Illegal use of hands to the face. Defense, number 93, five yards, first down. So Tito Simpson, who made that big play, put the ball on the one-yard line earlier in the game, gets called for the penalty, and that's huge. It is. It, it gives you another set of downs to make some big plays. You just don't see that call too often on defensive line. That's why you see offensive linemen get so excited when it is called. <laughs> you hear an offensive lineman talking right there. First and 10 at the 35. Okay, it's over, it's over! Not much yardage there. Donald Broomfield on the stop. Rodnick Phillips maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. This blitzing, stunning defense of Barcelona is hard to block up front. And lines are open if you want to vote for the World Bowl 9 MVP. Just log on to worldbowl.com. You can click and cast your vote, but please give it a little more time. You can log on now, but don't vote till later. Second and 10 for Berlin on the 35. Quinn over the middle and Bridges can't, sorry, Corey Atkins made the stop. Demetrius Brown couldn't hold on to it after the hit. You've seen here in the second half, I saw more balls dropped in, the, in this third quarter than I've seen in the last three games that I've watched. The balls are getting there a little bit quicker, a little bit behind him, but you still got to say that, that Brown needs to come up with that ball. He's supposed to be the possession receiver. That's a possession throw. Right now, the two best offenses in the league are not firing on all cylinders. Third and 10. And from the, from the safety, that was Miller on the blitz, and he nailed Quinn. Perfectly timed. Barcelona defensively timed that perfectly. Craig Miller came from his deep safety position at the last second. Berlin couldn't call an audible, couldn't find somebody to pick him up. He came untouched, hit Quinn right underneath the mouth. And it's a good thing that Jonathan held on to the ball. Fourth down, Brian Mormon into punt. Nice rush by the Dragons. Maury almost hit Mormon. Inslee chases it down at the 22. He's got Freeman throwing a block. But Stukes beats the block and chases Inslee out of bounds. Inslee goes over the advertising hoarding. Nice job by him. I think they need to move those advertisements back just a little bit. They'll still get their money's worth, but I've seen more players run into those things than, than I have into other players. And let's take a look at the hit now. <laughs> let's take a listen to the hit on Jonathan Quinn. But amazing that he held the ball. Yes, and, you know, we, at least he could see the hit coming. He, he tucked the ball down a little bit. Hits like that to your blind side or when, when fumbles usually occur. So the Dragons now will take over with first and 10 at the 28 yard line. I thought I was throwing. I had a model on slant go. Quinn talking things over with Pete Voss. 
Jarius Jackson just beats the rush. He can't complete over the middle to Inslee, but a flag comes down. This one will go against Berlin. You have some big uh, linebackers. One of them, number 56, Joe Wesley, back there trying to cover little wide receivers. Sometimes they have to resort to a little tug or push. Defense. Number 53, 56. And a nice job by Jerry Jackson yards, sensing the rush and getting rid of the down. ball just in time. He got rid of the ball just in time, but when you have mismatches like that, sometimes your big linebackers need to try and get away with a little snatch, and sometimes they get caught, sometimes they don't. They're bringing the ball back right now. Listen up, Sunday, Sunday. Right four, first down, first down, right? First down ball at the 33. Haven't had a Mark signal from referee Terry McCauley. Huck. Mike Green up the middle, picks up two. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter. Barcelona still leads Berlin, 17 that's to the 10. end of the third quarter. We'll be right back. Don't go away, the fourth quarter's coming up. And the Amsterdam Admirals beating the drum for their team, but it's the Barcelona Dragons who are in the lead, 17-10 here, as we join the fourth quarter of World Bowl Nine. The music's playing. <laughs> It's in everybody's ears. Well, you can tell that it's a big game because you got fans from all over Europe here today, and not only Europe, but the world. So for the Barcelona Dragons, it will be second down and a long six to go from the 36-yard line. And really now we're into the fourth quarter. We haven't seen the kind of offense in this game that we would have expected, Dale. No, we, we have not, but I think that's a case of both defenses have improved, they've watched film, they know what to expect from the other team, and they're playing like it's the World Bowl. Second down for Barcelona. Jackson back to throw. Unloads quickly. Simmons can't get away from the tackle of Wade Davis. Picks up about five. It'll bring up a third and three. Maybe two. Once you get beat deep a couple times, the Berlin defensive cornerbacks playing a little bit soft, making sure they're not going to get beat deep again. It opens up the underneath passing game. Brad Freeman now is in at wide receiver. He's split Mark left. 56, Mark 56. Two receivers to easy, the right. Easy. Third and two. And there's movement in the line. Easy, Looked like a Lester Pope may have moved too, quick, too soon. Ball start. Offense, number 65, five yards. Third down. It was big O. And so what happens is, again, they were going to go on a quick count there on third and short. They're probably going to try and quarterback sneak it. The offensive no, linemen hey, know that the first the thing they hear, they got to fire out. No, he throw, tried throw, to throw, audible, throw, said, easy, easy. Or Lester Pope, the first thing he heard, he moved. And now they're back in a, in a third and long situation. Third and a very long six for the Dragons. Mark 56, Mark 56, set, three, nine, eight. Monday, Monday. And Lester does it again. That looks like exactly the same situation. Snap. Ball start. Offense, number 65, five yards, third down. It's exactly the same thing that happened on the play before. The other thing you have to factor in is the noise here. Although there are, it's not a home field advantage for either team, there's a lot of noise out there on the field. Hard to hear, especially out there when you're one of the offensive tackles. Know that at least one NFL team here is interested in signing a Lester. But now on third and 12, Jackson goes back, and he's under pressure, and he's going to be sacked. First sack of the game, Jesse Warren comes up with the big one. And defensive coordinator Dave Duggan said, we need to have a big game out of our defensive ends. We need Antoine Young and Jesse Warren to be able to put pressure on the quarterback. Barcelona was afraid of the blitz. They knew that Berlin's not afraid to bring the blitz. Duggan said, we're not going to blitz as much as we did last week. We're counting on our front four. So Lafleur punting it away now. It's a wobbly kick. 
Peyton Williams calling for the fair catch at the 32, and Berlin will take over on downs there. So we'll be back. Don't go away. It is, and you know what? He was over here yesterday talking to all the players on both teams, and they love this thing. They, the players love to see him here. He loves to be here. This league continues to grow and get a lot more response from the European people than it has in years past. They set a new attendance record this year and they look for better things next year. Berlin Thunder looking for better things now. First and 10, their own 32. Quinn back to pass. Heckenback brings that one in safety, but he's not going to gain much. Antonio Wilson on the coverage and the tackle. And Peter Voss said he's not afraid to go back to players again to try and build their confidence. Heckenbach looked away from the last pass that was thrown his way. This one he made sure he brought in before he turned and tried to run. Pickup of about three. That'll make it second in a short 50, seven. 50. Right there, Fred. Right 19. Four wide receivers for Berlin. Quinn to throw again. Madre Hill swings out of the backfield. Quinn a little behind him, but Hill gets it in stride. Brought down from behind by Ramil Connor. Nice job by a defensive end. And that's a nice play by Madre Hill, reaching down to his ankles to catch the ball and not missing a stride. Not the best ball thrown by Jonathan Quinn all day, but that's what's going to make Madre uh, Hill a hot commodity in the free agent market because every team needs a third down back who can go out and catch the ball. First and right 10 there, for that. Berlin at the 44. Okay, he's down. Hill straight up the middle. Corey Atkins on the stop, but not before Hill picks up about four. It's always nice to know, especially as the season goes along, that you've given both running backs an equal chance to carry the ball. You have no problem replacing Madre Hill for a couple plays here, letting him catch a breather. Four wide receivers in for Berlin on second and six. Quinn with the quick one. Ahmad Merritt brings it in, but he's knocked out of bounds immediately by Dante Brown. Barcelona came up and did a nice job there. Earlier in the game, they were playing off. They were letting him catch the ball in front of him. Deontay Brown here gets a quick read on the ball, avoids a block by Heckenbach, and knocks Merritt out of bounds. Nice job. Pickup of about one yard on the play. That makes it third and about five. Again, four wide receivers for the Thunder. Right there. Big rush by the Dragons. McQuinn gets away from Washington. Over the middle, it's complete to Dwayne Jones. Jones with that speed breaks away before Brown brings him down at the 20 yard line. What I like to see there is Jonathan Quinn's pocket presence. He feels the pressure, avoids the sack by Keith Washington, steps up, and knows that he can't run for the first down. He makes a nice play downfield. Quinn, not known for his elusiveness, almost looks a little bit like Jarius Jackson throwing across his body, makes a nice throw downfield. They pick up the first down. And here's Jones now over the middle making the catch. Some nice blocking downfield to allow him to gain an extra 15 to 20 yards. At the 21, Quinn on the draw. Rodnick Phillips brought down by Sean Morey coming up quickly, but not before Phillips gains about four. This is looking an awful lot like their first drive of the game where they, everybody was in sync, their running game, their passing game. And like I said, when Quinn is on, when he's throwing the ball well, the entire offense clicks. It looks like they're gaining confidence as this drive goes along. Five minutes gone in the fourth quarter, second and six for Berlin. They're staying with the four wides. And the Dragons bringing the blitz. And Quinn with the touchdown to Ahmed Merritt. And it's a 17-16 ball game. What a job by Merritt. A great throw by Quinn, but the thing you're going to see in the replay is Merritt did a great job of it the last second separating from number 25, Jeff Popovich. Ahmad Merritt, what a nice route, giving Jonathan Quinn a nice target to throw to in the end zone. Jonathan Quinn's second touchdown pass of the game. The former Hertha Berlin soccer star Axel Kruse in to attempt the extra point that will tie us up. 
and it's good. And with 9.47 to play in this game, we're all knotted up at 17. And here's the play that did it. Ahmed Merritt with the catch. We'll be back. Jonathan Quinn to Ahmad Merritt, and we've got a tie game. What a play. There's really only one quarterback in this league who's going to make that throw. Ahmad Merritt here, he's working one-on-one -on -one against your man Jeff Popovich here. It separates right at the last second, right when he sees the ball. Quinn knows that he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage because Barcelona's bringing the blitz, lays the ball in there. 17-17. And Jeff Popovich just can't stay with Ahmad Merritt on that play. We're tied up. And Scott Bentley is in to kick off for Berlin. Deep for Barcelona, Sean Maury, who came on that blitz, and Rashawn Spikes. Now this is where Berlin's got to watch out. Barcelona's made some big plays on special teams, and just when Berlin starts to get back into the into the swing of things and get momentum on their side. Barcelona has come up with a few big plays. Make sure they make the tackle here. Bentley has squibbed the last two kickoffs. Let's see if he does it again. And he does. It's a knuckle ball fielded by Mori at the 15. Mori with a little daylight skips his way through, but there's a flag thrown behind him. He makes it up to the 40, but that looks like it's going to come back. Whenever you see a flag back there, you know it's going to be nothing good for the return team. You see the offense walking back towards their own goal line. And I think Jim Emanuel there was looking to try to figure out what it was he did. During the return, holding, receiving team, number 33, 10 yards, first down. And call goes against it. Number 23, I believe it was. Spikes with Joe Juan Armour. Arm it was Armour on yes. the side. It was Emmanuel right, was sorry, arguing, was arguing the call as he went up. My bad. First and 10, 22 now from the Dragons. They lose 18 yards on that penalty. Jackson to Inslee. Inslee's open. And he should be close to the first down, brought down by Wade Davis. You saw that graphic right before that play. Jarius Jackson, who hasn't thrown the ball for over 100 yards the last two games, is over 100 yards a day. Seems to be throwing the ball a little bit better with great protection by his offensive line. He has three all-league performers on that, on that offensive line. It is a first down for the Dragons. Mark 53. They've got the ball Set. at the 33. Block 80. Block 80. Pitch to Mike Green, left side. Green cuts back inside, gets up to about the 35. He'll pick up three. I'm so impressed with this Berlin Thunder run defense. They are running to the ball. They're covering their lanes. Nobody's over pursuing. They're doing a nice job of keeping Mike Green in check. Because that's where he, that's where he likes to beat you on the cutback. And there you see the Broncos that Dale was just talking about. Five there and a group of Indianapolis Colts. Exactly. Second and seven for the Dragons. Jackson to throw. Looks quick to Inslee. He's met by Dwayne Stooks. Dwayne Stooks comes up and puts a big hit on Inslee. Talking to Stooks the other day. He said the reason that he likes to play safety a little bit more is you can attack everything downhill. He loves to come up and put the big hit on people because when you are a cornerback, you come up and try and put a big hit on somebody and you miss, it's six points going the other way. Great hit by Stoops with a little help from Billy Gustin. Jackson just got rid of the ball before yeah. Peyton Williams got to him. Pick up of three, third and four. Jackson looking downfield. Simmons trying to make room for himself. There's a lot of pushing and shoving going on there, but no flags are thrown. Wade Davis on the coverage, and that'll bring up a punting situation for Barcelona. That's a very nice job by Wade Davis. He fought through a little hand pick by Simmons there. Good call by the ref, just letting him play football instead of calling a ticky-tack foul there. Tony Simmons and Wade Davis discussing the definition of ticky-tack. <laughs> And Bill LaFleur into punt for the Dragons. LaFleur gets off a high kick. It's sailing down inside the 15. And a nice little move by Peyton Williams, but he's brought down by Troy Pelshek. 
losing a couple of yards from the 15 on that play and really quick to separate in there. We'll be back with more fourth quarter action from Amsterdam. And don't forget that you can vote for the World Bowl 9 MVP. All you have to do is log on to worldbowl.com and then follow the clicks to make your vote. But there's still time to go in this game. You may still want to know who the MVP is. As you said, Mike, don't vote too early because somebody's going to make a play here to win this game. You don't know which team it's going to come from or when it's going to happen. Berlin Thunder now taking over first and 10 on the 14. Red 19. That's it. Quinn looking fakes the quick throw and now they're going deep. And Dante Brown running side by side there with Corey Bridges. Slots over the left, D20. Slots over left, D20. Slots so you hear their left, slots. D20. Slots over left, D20 means it's going to be a draw. They're going to hand the ball out, try and bring hey, Barcelona defensive up line upfield. Avoid the rush, hand the ball off, and gain yards right Box up over the left, middle. D20, on one, on eight. Very simple system that the Berlin Thunder used to name 50, their plays. 50. Right Sometimes you try to make this game Set. too difficult. And there's the draw, as predicted. Madre Hill breaks a tackle, squirts forward for another couple of yards. Sean Morey on the stop. You saw T.J. Washington working on Engelhardt there. That's the matchup that we've been watching on film. Engelhardt, an all-league performer, six and a half sacks. He's relentless. He never stops. T.J. Washington, the left offensive guard for Berlin, was watching film with me. The last time these two played, Engelhardt embarrassed him a couple times. T.J. said, I promise you, that won't happen again, Dale. Black 42. Pick up of about three, call it third and seven. Bad. Movement on the front. No flags. Quinn, lots of time. He's got Jones, and Jones has the first down. Anthony Marlborough on the stop. That all starts with the offensive line. The offensive line has given Jonathan Quinn ample amount of time to throw the ball. And talking to Bob McNell, who coaches that offensive line, he said the thing about this offensive line is that not one player has missed a practice the entire season because of injury. That lends itself to cohesiveness and productivity on the field. First and 10, 29 for the Thunder. Straight handoff, Rodnick Phillips finds some running room. He's up to just short of the 40. And it's going to be close to a first down. Sammy Hamoudi making the tackle. Slots, slots. It is a first down. Now slant, slots, now slant. When they say now, now slant, slant. Oh, oh, now means oh. quick screen. Look for this ball to come out quick to either a receiver 51, 51. or the running back, but it's, everything's going to happen quick. Set. First and 10 at the 40. And he overthrows Demetrius Brown, looking to set up that little screen with Jones in front of him. That'll bring up second and 10 for Berlin. Quinn a little bit frustrated because he knows if he gets this ball into the hands of his receiver, uh, Brown, he knows that he can make something happen there. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage with Sean Morey. Dragon switching defensive line. Maybe Berlin more. back to four wide Set. receivers now on second and 10. Right 19. Right 10. Quinn, short drop. Completes the pass on the left side. Stop made by Joe, Joe Juan Armour. Complete to Corey Bridges. Again. Jack McNeil now starting to look a little worried there with his defense not able to stop Berlin. Third down and about three for the Thunder. Quinn now on the naked bootleg. Washington chases him, but Quinn unloads. And what a great catch and a touchdown. Dwayne Jones is second of the game. As you said, don't vote for your MVP too early. You don't know who's going to make a, a big play to win this ball game. Jonathan Quinn, third and short, decides to take a shot downfield. As Peter, you heard Peter no. Voss say there, throw the ball Quinn, up. Use your body and make a play. Nice job. Give the ball a little air and let your receiver make a play. Yeah. 
Axel Cruza on for the extra point. He chips it through, and the Berlin Thunder have retaken the lead at 24-17. Jonathan Quinn's third touchdown of the game. What a play. There's great coverage by Deontay Brown here. It's one-on-one -on -one downfield. Again, the thing I want to see from the cornerback, receiver looks back, you look back. He didn't look back until it was too late. Jones makes a nice physical play. Again, the referees seem to be letting him play downfield. A little more physical than they have in the past, but you have to be able to adjust to that. And Quinn, Quinn does a nice job throwing the ball on the run very accurately. Jones even had to wrestle it away from Brown. Amazing play by the Thunder. Big plays, win big games. You got to get the hand. You got to get the ball in the hands of your playmaker, and that's exactly what Berlin did on that play. And there you see the line, Dwayne Jones, six for 161, two touchdowns, the second most in World Bowl history. <laughs> Dante Brown's got to be saying, what else do I have to do? Yeah, the only thing I can say is that if you're a defensive best coach, you say when you see the receiver turn around, you turn around. There's a reason why he's looking back. That means the ball's in the air. You look back and see it, you have a chance of intercepting it or knocking it down. Scott Bentley to kick off now. He squibbed the last three. He squibs the fourth. Jim Emanuel gets in front of that one at the 25. Break forward to about the 42. And he was taking that ball. He wasn't going to let it go back. I think he saw enough balls go, go by him. He said, I'm going to grab the ball and go. Cali Stuba, the German linebacker, on the stop for the Thunder. So the Dragons now with four minutes to play take over with good field position on the 42, trailing the Thunder by seven. Now this is where it's interesting to see how patient is Barcelona going to be. Are they going to try and get this all back in one play or are they going to drive the ball down the field? A little draw to Green and Green gets forward over the 45. And it looks like they're going to move the ball right on the ground. Smash. Pull back, check down. Right smash. Pull back, check down. Right. You got the, right you're smash. Good there, on the call, right? They're going to go to the air here, but it's not going to be a long pass. You're going to see that Mike Green will be the second option Mark if nobody's 86. open downfield. Green, and Green was wide open, but so too is Carlos Rosado, and Rosado stopped about a yard short of the first down. There we go. Let's go, babe. Yeah. Left. Five. Left. Five. But like left we said five. earlier, first down, first down, right? neither one of these offenses are very complicated when it comes to the running game. Left five, they're going to hand the ball to Mike Green and say, run off left tackle, get us a first down. And that's Sam Rotigliano making the calls. Green plows through, and it looks like he did pick up the first down. And that's amazing effort that's from Mike, Mike Green, cross. Jesse Warren, fullback and flat. Joe Wesley you know, sure in on the stop. Where your fullback? Left wide cross. Left wide cross. Listen up. Left wide cross on the color, the color, right? Yeah. Your wide cross, you're going to look at your tight end. Rodriguez is going to be the guy that's crossing. He said, watch your fullback in the flat, too. That's the guy who's been coming open late. There's Inslee underneath. He's got the ball. He turns inside. Rodriguez gives him a little bit of a block, but he's brought down. Nice bit of tackle by Mark Megna. Billy Gustin in on the play as well. This is the best that I've seen Jerry Jackson throw the ball. He seems to have a little bit of confidence. He's stepping back, throwing the ball on time, finding his open receiver. That one gained about five, and the two-minute warning is coming up. The Dragons are moving. They trail the Berlin Thunder by seven points. This warning. one's getting interesting. Don't go away, because we'll be right back. Welcome back to Amsterdam. Two minutes to play. The Dragons trail the Thunder by seven. This is Jack McNell territory. This is Jack McNell territory. In the last couple plays, you've heard him radio the play to Jarius Jackson. I asked him, who calls the plays? He said, Sam Ratigliano does. I said, do you have veto power? He said, well, I can change the play if I want to, but I have so much faith in Sam. He said, I might change the play one out of every 150 or 200 times a play comes to me. Sam Ratigliano, former NFL coach of the year. Knows more offense than most of us have forgotten. Forgotten more than most of us know. 
Jackson back to throw on second down. Inley with the catch. Fumbles the ball, but it's out of bounds. It's going to be a first down for the Dragons at the 30. Peyton Williams on the tackle. Hensley having a nice ball game. What Berlin's doing is they're trying to cover him one-on-one -on -one with Peyton, um, with Sean Peyton, just like Scotland did in weeks eight and nine. The ball they put their best forward out of bounds. The clock will start on the ready. On Trevor Hensley, completely shut him down. And uh, Sean Peyton here is having a little bit more difficult time doing that. First and 10, 30-yard line. Jackson again looking to throw. Back to Inslee. Inslee's going to be just short of a first down at about the 22. Peyton Williams again on the tackle. Peyton Williams again covering Inslee one-on-one. On one. Barcelona, their first charge timeout. And until Please he can cover him up, to 135. they're going to keep going to him. Let's take a listen now and see what Sam and Jack are talking about. Timeout. Right, six, but then we going to take a timeout again? Huh? You got to throw yeah. it, bro. Huh? What? Oh, first down. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Okay. What you want to go? What is it? Thank you. We'd like to get the first down. Right 61. Right 61. Right 61. Jack's radio is a call to Jarius. is about two feet away from him. <laughs> well, I don't think he knew if Jarius heard him or not because they were talking on the sidelines there. Listen up. Right, 61, on the color, color, ready? Right, 61, they're just going to hand the ball off. Mike Green's going to go up the middle, find an open space, and get the first down, and then they'll go from there. Mike, 56. Mike Green needs a yard. Go, go, go. Green, 88. Cut. There it is on the draw. Green has crossed the 20, gets down to the 25, flags fly. Dak Strohmeyer, Dwayne Stukes on the stop. Strohmeyer it was who might have gotten a bit of Mike Green's hat. The question is here, is it a personal foul, or is it going to be just the five-yard variety? That's uh, kind of borderline yeah. to me. Brass new face mask, defense. Five-yard foul, first down. So it's an incidental face masking. But now this is a territory where Barcelona's had its problems. Inside the 20-yard line all day Monday, long, Monday, Berlin Monday. has played very tough. Red zone defense. This is the difference in the game. The Dragons have been down here four times. They've come away with three Mark field 56. goals. They've got first and ten on the 11. Jackson looks for Simmons in the corner, overthrows him. Simmons bumped off the play by Wade Davis. And they are letting him play physical downfield. Simmons and Davis bumping on each other there in the end zone. The referees are going to go ahead and let them play. They're not, the referees do not want to decide a game like this in the final minute and a half. They're going to let them play. Second and 10 from the 11. 125 to play. Two wide receivers to the left. And he's in the slot. Here comes the blitz. Jackson unloads. It's caught by Brad Freeman, who played, made a couple of big catches against the Scottish Claymores in Week 7. He's brought down by Strohmeyer. Barcelona takes the timeout. It'll be third and two at the three. Very nice drive by Barcelona here. There's two things that come to mind for me. One is don't score too quick. And second, if you score, do you go for two, or do you kick the extra point play for the top? Oh, oh, okay. Well, you got the Yeah. Right 33. Right 33. Right 33. <laughs> I think he was listening to you, Dale. You know, what, what I like is I like that Jarius walks all the way over to the sidelines, and then Jack waits till he starts to hey. walk away, and then he radios the play to, the to him. Right 33 on the color, right? Okay, this is third down and two at the three. You know this is four down territory, so they don't, it doesn't matter here. They're going to go for it on fourth down if they don't make the first down. And Jackson, nobody's open. He's going to take off now and scramble. He's going to, and he can't make the corner. Dax Strohmeyer forces him out of bounds at the five. Here you go. Inbound, out. Inbound, out, out. Inbound. The referees finally decide he's going out of bounds. The clock stopped at 106. This is great coverage by the Berlin. Secondary, 
The pass rush was non-existent. Jarius Jackson usually quick enough to get to the outside, but Dax Strohmeyer has great pursuit angle, Wait, has a great burst and tackles him for loss. You only got 12 seconds, Jay. Jay, it's, you only got 12 seconds. It's fourth down and five at the six, oh, yeah. and the clock is down. It's four, three, two, and they have to take the timeout before they would get the penalty for delay of the game. Timeout. Barcelona. That, that was a third too close for comfort. It will be a 30 second timeout. And now this, this makes a whole new situation if you don't get that first down. Yes, because you're completely out of timeouts. If you don't get the first down of the touchdown, Berlin, all they have to do is take a knee and the game's over with. Let's see what, what play Jack and Sam Matigliano are going to come up with. And there's the mark. You see that yellow mark on the sideline is where they need to get to for a first down. They could get a first down without scoring a touchdown, but the clock will keep on moving if they do. It all comes down to one play. You work all season long. You play preseason games in Florida. You play 10 games in Europe. And now your season depends on one fourth down play in the Amsterdam Arena. And Coach Voss said at the beginning of the year, he said, guys, promise me one thing. Yeah. Whether we're 0-10 or we're 10-0, play hard every game until the last whistle. I'll be proud of you. You'll be proud of yourselves. This is what it comes down to right here. There you go, White. Jackson to pass. And it's batted down at, in the backfield. 92, Antoine Young makes the play. The Berlin Thunder now, all they have to do is take the knees and run out the clock. And they're the World Bowl champions. And John Harris, it was, I think, who got, the, got his hand to the ball. Let's go. And six foot seven John Harris been waiting for that all day. Big John Harris, all six foot seven, six foot eight of him putting pressure right up in the middle where a quarterback doesn't like it. Gets his big mid up in the air, knocks the ball down. This is what an NFL team craves. There's a big defensive tackle who can pressure the middle, get the hands up in the air, knock the ball down. Every team in the NFL wants to see that happen. And Harris getting no rush at all on that, but the presence of mind to get the hands up. Two years ago in the World Bowl, Jack McNell lost to his former offensive coordinator, Dick Curl, and his son, Bobby McNell, was Curl's assistant. And now it looks like he's going to lose to another former offensive assistant, Pete Vaz. Bobby McNell's on Pete Vaz's side. Jonathan Quinn takes a knee. And really, it's all over now. I asked Bob McNell the other day, I said, who does your mom root for in these games? And she and he said, there's no doubt she always roots for dad because he is her husband. That way there, there's absolutely nothing that can go wrong. Bobby understands it. Jack understands it. The great thing about this is Jack and Bob, Tuesday morning at 545, we're going to be playing golf back in the States. Jack McNell likes to get up early in the morning, play his golf while the dew is still on the New Hampshire grass. And Lois Picknell is going to have to congratulate Bobby and commiserate with Jack after this one. The Berlin Thunder are the champions of NFL Europe, 24-17. There you go, Peter. Oh, the game. Good job. Good job. And Jack Picknell congratulates his old assistant, Pete Voss. There you go. Go home. And their first World Bowl victory in their second season in NFL Europe. Rush in, get your vote down for MVP. It's too late. Jonathan Quinn has been named the World Bowl MVP for throwing three touchdown passes. I tell you what, he started off hot, middle of the second and third quarter. He kind of he, he kind of lost a little bit of it. Fourth quarter, he really stepped up, did a great job making some big plays down the stretch. And so that's it from World Bowl Nine. 24-17, the Berlin Thunder have defeated the Barcelona Dragons. From Dale Hellestray and myself, Mike Carlson, and all of us here at NFL Europe, thanks for watching a great football game.